All right, welcome to Speak For Yourself. I am Jason Whitlock. That is Marcellus Wiley. That dude. Yes, sir. Coming up, we'll tell you if this is a make or break year for Mike Tomlin. And if NFL players have more power than they realize. But we start every day with the Whitlocks. What you got today, big dog? Oh, I have bad news for Saints coach Sean Payton. The NFL has every reason to be very comfortable with what happened a year ago. Overall television ratings were up. Conversation about the symbol formerly known as Colin Kaepernick was down. Patrick Mahomes and Baker Mayfield planted the seeds to blossom into the next Peyton Manning and Tom Brady. 2018 was an outstanding year for the NFL. Not only should the league feel comfortable, it should feel good about itself. The number one TV show, show on five different networks reestablished itself as the greatest pop culture force since Michael Jackson. Sean Payton needs to beat it. Mm. The Saints coach want to be starting something. Mm. He's still whining that the referees in the NFC Championship game were smooth criminals mm. who cheated New Orleans by not flagging the Rams for pass interference. Yesterday, Payton told the NFL Network that if the league doesn't make changes to its replay system or officiating, then ownership is saying they're comfortable with what happened a year ago. Mm -hmm. Peyton went on to call for the league to make its referees full-time employees, and today ESPN reported that the league's competition committee has proposed an expansion to replay that will allow non-calls to be reviewed. Peyton wants to heal the world. Mm -hmm. He thinks what happened in the final minutes of regulation during the NFC Championship game was black or white. He's putting the Saints organization <laughs> on a cross it and was. screaming, they don't really care about us. <laughs> Peyton doesn't understand human nature. Come on. Would someone please tell Peyton that if he wants to make the world a better place, mm. that he needs to take a look at himself and make a change? Hey. I'm starting with the coach in the mirror. Uh, I'm asking Sean Payton to change his ways. Payton is killing the 2019 Saints. He's giving himself and his players an out. By focusing on the past and one allegedly blown call, the Saints can't move forward. If Payton doesn't climb off his victimhood cross immediately, the Saints are going to take a significant step back next season. Drew Brees is 40 years old. He's winding down. Maximizing whatever time Brees has left as a top five quarterback should be Sean Payton's offseason priority. The Saints are not the first team to lose an important game because of a blown call. Payton is acting like the Saints can't repeat their performance from last season. They tied the Rams for the best record in football a year ago at 13 and 3 and led the NFL in point differential at plus 151. They were the league's best regular season team. Peyton has paid around $8 million a season to win football games. He's not paid to fix officiating errors. He's not paid to ensure that no other fan base or team is a victim of a blown call. <laughs> Fixing officiating won't improve the Saints. Peyton is a terrific head coach and play caller. Arrogance oftentimes gets the best of him. He got caught up in a personal duel with the boy wonder, Sean McVay, and it caused Peyton to make some horrible decisions early and late in regulation. Peyton's officiating crusade is pure deflection. Peyton wants football fans to remember the time the refs missed a call mm. rather than focus on who's bad during the rest of the game. <laughs> I can't rock with Sean Payton. <laughs> All right. Joining the desk now. Oh, man. Fox Sports College football oh, analyst. Oh, my God. God. Heisman Trophy winner in my mind. You're still the Heisman Trophy Bruh, winner. Appreciate that. Reggie Bush. Thank you. Plus, Steelers legend and future Hall of Famer James Harrison, Marcellus, Sean Payton's crusade about this non-call yeah. can hurt them this upcoming season. Uh, I just got one question for Reggie. Did you give them a replica or you gave them the original? No, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I would have gave them a fake hype. It's so fast. It's lost in Johnson's trophies. Oh, <laughs> um, this is not an obsession. Uh, he's almost obligated to speak about it because he's on the competition committee. Thank you. At the owner's at the meeting. meeting. Thank like you. Like day to yeah. day. You think this guy is really having compulsive behavior behind this call? Yes. You think he's 24-7 <laughs> consumed about this call? Yes. Like, really? Yes. Have you ever brought Did up something? Did they some be comfortable with last year? Did they make money last year? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they can be yeah. real comfortable. Yeah, but can you connect the dots and remember that he spoke about it when it happened? He spoke about it the next week because it was the Super Bowl when you can get things 
going, momentum going towards change and towards some rule changes. And then he brings it up again at owner's meeting. And you use that two-month gap to say that every <laughs> single day, right. all Sean Payton right. is thinking Come about on, man. is this call. He's trying to do it for his team, his own selfish ways, and for a greater good for all teams because this can haunt a franchise. I was mm -hmm. a part of a franchise, the Music City Miracle. I don't think there's real correlation between the Music City Miracle and the fact that Buffalo's only been to the playoffs once since. <laughs> but if you look at this situation, there's going to be regression to the mean. They had the best record in the league. Mm -hmm. What are the odds that they're going to have the best record in the league again? What are the odds? Not good. Thank you. you what, what are the odds that they're going to go to the Super Bowl or even win the Super Bowl? Slim to none, no matter what the year. I think right now you're mapping on the fact that he brought this up twice in two months. Right. To the yeah. fact that they're probably going to be a lesser team next year and saying this is going to be the reason. Yeah. It, it, listen, you just alluded to it. It is hard as hell to repeat what you did the year before. To get back to that same record that they had, that's nearly impossible. The Patriots make it look easy, but I promise you it's not easy. No. You've been through it. Yeah. You've been through it. We've all been through it. It is not easy to get back to that. Um, on another note, it's at the owner's meeting. He's supposed to talk about it there because that's where they try to fix some of the issues from last year. Right. I don't have an issue with yeah. reviewing non-calls because too often we're seeing games decided by the referees, right? It shouldn't be that way. Yeah. You know how many guys you know who in decided that game? The game? Sean Payton. When he oh. didn't run the ball on first down. Okay. You know damn well mm -hmm. that's what cost him the Look game. Look at that, that call not being called. You, it don't get no more egregious than that right there. That is crazy. That's like an offensive lineman talking about, I'm not holding you. The ball was catchable. He got his arms locked behind his back. The, <laughs> the ball, quarterback is standing there, the and he holding him back like this. The ball was uncatchable. It's an optical it illusion. The ball was uncatchable. No, he, he runs that's straight into the ball. Bro, look, that's, look it. That's, that's an optical on illusion. The ball was past him. Bro, Long on, calls happen all the time. That what? bad? <laughs> yes. That's, come on. Don't make him mad. <laughs> don't make you James You almost whipped me go to James offset. <laughs> Bro, on one play, we had helmet to helmet. Helmet to helmet. Uh, pass interference. CTE, all that. We didn't have to worry about the helmet player, players, but you didn't call that. What are y'all looking at? That's helmet to helmet. You can't get no more helmet to helmet than that. Mm. Like, at least that. it's helmet to helmet. At the worst case, don't try and win no argument. Just helmet. say it. Can you give me helmet to helmet? That's I don't helmet. believe in helmet to helmet. I don't believe in CTE. I like You don't what? believe in CTE? No, I don't. And so I, I think it's overrated and exaggerated. And I, you know, that's not... That man ain't hurt. That's a good football play. It is a good uh, football <laughs> play, but it's a horrible If you were the receiver, timing. if you were the receiver, is that That's a good football play? That's horrible timing. Is that a good football play? That's two Drew early. Brees made a bad pass, and they should. You know, oh, That's not a bad pass. <laughs> That's a good pass. The DB got to look. He got to turn his the head. DP. He didn't even turn his head. He even admitted it. He's not it. even allowed the bodyguard. Yes. That is, he hit the man before the ball. He even admitted got there, it after the snot out of him. He himself game. said, yeah, yeah, I got away with it. I got away with one. But we going to the ball. Okay, okay. Answer this question, honest to goodness. If they had run the ball on first down, would this even have been an issue? This would have been less an issue. I don't okay, know okay, what okay, issue yeah. because I don't know what the play let calls were going to be beyond that. If they had scored points in the first quarter touchdowns rather than field goals because of the bad play calls, wow. would this have been? But all you're talking about is what they could have done. This so, was out of their control, we're about what and happened. that's why they're complaining yeah. about it. What because something out of your control shouldn't dictate your forecast. Oh, okay. It shouldn't dictate Marcellus, what the outcome is going to be. I, I, it you, shouldn't. You, you, these are great football players. Her, yeah, yeah. Great Roller. coaches y'all play for. Mm -hmm. What do they tell you? Control what you can control. Exactly. Is that right. not what they tell exactly. you? Exactly. You know and what they, they were in position, you? and then someone mm -hmm. out outside that realm. You know what also happens? Controlled. Sorry. You know what also happens is when a player messes up and makes a mistake, we get chewed out. If you make too many mistakes, you get replaced or you get benched. Mm -hmm. Steve Wilkes got fired after one year. Yeah. Referees are not held to the same accountability as the rest of the league, as the players, and it shouldn't be that way. When you miss a call like that, of that magnitude, Reggie, there should be some kind of... Reggie, I don't like officials, but you do know that you players make a lot more money than the rest. I knew you're gonna go there. I mean, it's just, just a fact. So, okay. Well, People, well, how, much the make? how much are the owners making? How much the owners making? They billions. didn't blow the call though. I'm just saying the referees make a lot less money, so the consequences aren't as great as they are for the players who they. Hell, they so they so money. Pay came up with money. another idea too: full-time referees, which means that pay would go up too, right? Yep. For, look, I kind of like full-time referees, mm. kind of. Mm. But it won't fix this. No. Humans are going to make mistakes. That's why we that need one, replay. they could have called him. Thank you. They could have called that up. That's why we need replay.
Well, full-time referees mean full-time humans doing the same job, yeah. <laughs> which means right. perfect is the enemy of the good. And the good of this is we have really good officiating. Let's be real about it. 97% of the time, we're sitting there fine with how the game mm -hmm. was called. Every now and then, something pops up, and every now and then, something gets exaggerated. Yeah. This was egregious. Marcellus, I give you have, that. You ever, yeah, have you ever had anything that was oh, that bad uh, not called? Mm, I, I, in such a, no, a horrible not that bad. situation. Even Music City Miracle, which was bad, there I can understand where they thought it was different, opposite call. Okay, and that's different, different. Different so, no. category, but is this worse than the tuck rule and what cost Oakland? Is this worse than that? No. I, I can't say that. It's so that. I again, it's yeah. around, so yeah. who was who was <laughs> Tuck Rule took 30 yeah. minutes on the field there. to figure out And did the did the yeah, Raiders that, that was, throw a whole offseason tantrum? No, they just stopped making the playoffs. <laughs> they just like, like Buffalo. Say, hey, it, I mean, there's an umbrella. There, there's a Listen, cloud, he brought, he brought a dark that cloud. At times where it can be brought up, you're at the they're at the owners' meetings. Yeah. They're talking about the competition meeting. That's What's wrong with bringing it up? Yeah. I'm trying to. He's trying to get a rule that it's will the, absorb anybody from having to yeah. go to the same. Yeah, okay. Gruden left and went to You can bring it up, but like, oh my God, they can't be comfortable with what happened last year. Give me a break. Man, y'all lost the game. You trying of the to represent? And, and, has and, he? Has he? Narrative out okay. there. Has he at once said, you know what? I did some things wrong in that game. I should have. He didn't make that call wrong. He's, he he's says not, it. It's not headline. <laughs> when he says that, we ain't picking yeah. that up. Yeah, that ain't what are we talking about? <laughs> <laughs> oh, we we, we going it up. Oh, he should have ran the ball in the first you quarter. He said, <laughs> he said, I should have ran the ball. Yeah, you would bring it up. Nobody else would. Yeah, okay. That's what? Coaches make bad choices. I hate to even go to this next question because. Y'all yeah. already have <laughs> let me know. I've lost respect for Sean Payton by the way he's handled this. I, again, when I say lost respect, the guy's a great coach, and, and he's one of the three or four best coaches in football. But I knock him down a peg because this is not the way Belichick would handle this, I guarantee it. Ah, Belichick wouldn't be whining. Well, the Belichick is always on um, the beneficiary of some of these. Yeah, exactly. He'd never be on the other every side of the table. Every time it's a close hey, call, you know, I'm not gonna every lie. Every time it's a close call, they're gonna get. I was in, yeah, I was let's in hear New this. England, okay, and it was a call that I'm looking at it, and I'm looking, and I'm like, oh, that's gonna go against this. That's gonna go against this, and. I'm sitting there, and I'm looking at the screen, and I'm waiting on the ref to make the call. The you got ref, a Pittsburgh mindset still. The ref, <laughs> the ref <laughs> makes the call, right? And I turn and I look at somebody. I'm not going to tell you who it is. I turn and I look, and I'm like, what? He's like, it's New England. <laughs> but, like, but to that, to that <laughs> point, everybody <laughs> knows. <laughs> every team knows when you play the Patriots in New England, Boy. and if that call is borderline, Boy. they don't get the call. 100% yeah. they're going to get the call. I'll tell you something, they don't, they don't replay they're, anything they questionable, it. like the screen going down, all yeah, that. They're going to get it. They're going to get the call. Y'all know Tom Brady's on his team and was suspended by the league. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Tom Brady. Yeah, yeah, to make up for all them calls they got. <laughs> I'm messing <laughs> uh, with you. I Tom know. Brady. They don't get all the calls. It just no, 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 no. very opportunistic. Now, he's the number one player in the league, and they suspended him. Yeah, he messed up. Yeah, he messed up. What's wrong with that? What do you mean? Those over, two are not connected. Over you know, deflated. A pass over, over the balls being, being a little deflated. more comfortable to your hands. He destroyed yeah. a phone. Have you ever destroyed a phone to get an upgrade? I have it. No, no one has. But again, to I say that, mine. Let's go to the phones. All the old ones. <laughs> so y'all lost. This, None. this None. enhances None. your. He's on the competition committee. Understand that do? they're going to put a microphone nothing? in your face. Understand that they're going to talk about what do you want to change going forward. Guess how you change it. You got to look backwards. You have to look backwards into some of the moments okay, that okay. are Once the season starts, if he brings it up again, then I'll go with you. But until yep. then, okay, I'm yeah. not. Okay, tell me, and I know how you feel about this, <laughs> given your relationship with the commissioner, but the guy wore a Roger Goodell clown shirt shirt, T-shirt mm -hmm. at his press conference. Who? That, mm. Sean Payton. You put two At his press together. conference. Okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. Everybody, What's at his, wrong with that? I'm talking about a couple of months ago, yeah. originally. Yeah. None of, that's not unbecoming of a head coach. Okay, I, I can see that. That is maybe a little unbecoming for him to wear that shirt. If a player did it, I'd be like, yes, good job. Mm -hmm. But if it's a coach, um, yeah, that, that might be a little borderline unbecoming just because he didn't unzip work it. together. He I didn't unzip. Together. He didn't unzip. Listen. All we saw was the top, and we put you two and two yeah, together. You're, you're assuming that the rest of it was. Yeah. You didn't he, see Sean that. Sean Payton's not arrogant, and arrogance didn't perhaps cost him. He got caught he up. He just missed the Super Bowl because of that call. Yeah. And he don't want to do nothing about it. He has the power to do whatever he wants because they gave him that power. All he had to do was say, you know what? He At that point in time, he could have said, y'all missed that call. 
the call is what it should be and give him the ball back, put him right there where they need to be. He has the power to do that. He has the Good power to, you're talking about. Yes, yeah. he has the power yeah. to tell you if your <clears throat> socks are down too low, you know what? I just changed my mind. That's a hundred thousand dollar fine. Mm -hmm. They gave mm -hmm. him that power. Mm -hmm. He has more power than anybody in the world except for God himself. Mm. Ooh. Well, not a doubt. And one. that as NFL, it relates <laughs> to the NFL. That, it, as it relates to the NFL. Like he has the power to change any rule that yeah. he wants to. But we're talking about Sean Payton, and he has the power to let this and go. He has the power to do what he's supposed to do to because let, he's on and the move on to the next and city. represent and show what has happened in the previous years because you are here now with the heads, and everybody's trying to come to See, what the, will make. I'm gonna tell you what, what the where the disconnect is because y'all were players that are you know long careers. Y'all haven't stepped into the fan shoes fully. Mm -hmm. And just when we start adding in all this replay and everything gets second guessed, it's not as enjoyable as an experience for the fan. I get it. As players, you pour all that energy and you want everything to be perfect and right. I get it. But as a fan, the more I spend time thinking about the referees, the less passionate I am about the game. So if they can do it in a timely fashion, would you be yeah. on board with what we're saying in terms of integrity and just getting the objective things right? No, because And that's objective. That wasn't even subjective. But we talked it was about helmet to helmet. We talked about this yesterday, Marcellus. You more replay you add, the more flags you're gonna add. Because it's oh well it's reviewable. I'm just gonna throw them and we'll sort it out and replay. But you don't make every call reviewable. Now right? we non-calls are they're talking about making <laughs> reviewable now. You don't even gotta call a Throw a flag and they can still review it. Yeah, clearly this is well, a non-call. Well, they still find you there. with non-calls <laughs> too. Now they send you a letter like, "Oh, we we missed this in the game," but yeah. you still get a letter. Yeah. For so he got fined. Yeah. He got fined. Court Roby got fined before they even had spoken about, you know, whether it was a right call. Right. Yeah. He had already had the FedEx in the play. helmet. The helmet. FedEx was waiting on him by the time he landed. Yeah. Right. With the fine. If you're looking to add some excitement to tournament games, make BetDSI your tournament betting partner. BetDSI has been paying winners for 20 years and is top rated on betting review sites. BetDSI has a very user-friendly interface, mobile site, and has the fastest payouts in the industry. Simply play, win, get paid. BetDSI offers betting options for everything. Bet on March Madness, NBA, NHL, and all the other major sports, politics, reality TV, virtually everything. Try live betting at BetDSI, where you can bet on games from start to finish, every play and every minute until the end. New members get 100% bonus match using promo code SPEAK. That's S-P-E-A-K. Once again, go to BetDSI.com and use the promo code SPEAK and get this limited time 100% bonus offer to make some extra cash betting the madness this March. Get one three million dollar contest entry just for signing up with the promo code SPEAK. It's only a game until you bet it at BetDSI. James Harrison and Reggie Bush are back. Time now for a big story sponsored by Volvo and the all new S60. Follow no one. All right, let's move to Pittsburgh where Mike Tomlin is picking up the pieces after Antonio Brown and Le'Veon Bell effectively forced their way out of town this offseason. The Steelers are clearly hoping that all the drama around Brown and Bell left town with Brown, them leaving town, and Tomlin offered no regrets about losing two of his best players, saying, quote, we can't do this with hostages. Man, we need volunteers. We need good players, good guys who want to be here, and if guys can't check those boxes, it's probably best for the all parties involved to go our separate ways. All right, uh, I believe next year will be critical for Mike Tomlin. Mm -hmm. If they do not make the playoffs and show some real improvement, the calls for his job are going to be loud and powerful. Uh, how I expect him to perform in this situation. I, I love <coughs> Tomlin and Big Ben in this spot. I think they're going to deliver. I think they're going to win the AFC North. But if it doesn't happen, if they don't make the playoffs, Mike Tomlin's days in Pittsburgh may be numbered. Yeah, I don't think it should be a make or break season. We know how the game goes. So uh, there will be a scapegoat or you just will say, hey, Mike Tomlin, enough damage done. Uh, but think about the hard reset that is necessary when you lose your two best playmakers. And you talk about a team that has an aging quarterback. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. You should be able to reset the coach's tenure as well. Mm -hmm. It happened with Pete Carroll in Seattle when he got rid of the Legion of Boom. They didn't make the playoffs next year. They, no calls for his job. It's like, we get it. 
we got a situation where we're going to let you groom this new crop. Yeah. So Mike Tomlin should be afforded the same opportunity, <clears throat> second most wins as an active coach. You just don't discard that guy in situations like that. And you want to keep consistency at the top when you're talking about a quarterback who's coming down the mountain. Why make a change right now when Ben only has so few years? I, I see it as a make-or-break season for him. Um, he's had arguably <clears throat> the best offense the last three or four years, and each year as the years has gone by, he's come – up a little closer, but actually, you know, even further away from the goal of a Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. um, right now, he's on his last year. They haven't extended him yet. That right there speaks volumes. Mm -hmm. You know, by this time, normally in his previous a uh, few other extensions, he was already extended. So I think they're saying we're going to sit back. We're going to see if you can get the reins on this team now. We've got uh, a couple guys gone that didn't want to be here um, yeah. that, you know, they considered distractions. Now can you get this group that we have right now together and get us back into the playoffs, back to playing Stiller football? Mm -hmm. If you can do that and you can show us that you can do that, I think they will extend him, you know, after the season. But I don't think that will happen until he uh, goes through this year and improves. Yeah, and I think that's the narrative, right? Because um, now the, the – the coaching has to show up because you don't have A.B. anymore. Right. You don't have that safety blanket and that workhorse in Le'Veon Bell anymore. So now your coaching is really going to have to shine in this time after you've gotten these guys out because you said they're a distraction and you've kept Big Ben, which I believe that Big Ben is an extension of the head coach. I believe Big Ben is the CEO of this football team because he's been there for a long time, right? He's had success. He's won Super Bowls with you guys. And – he calls the plays, and he's a natural leader in that position. So a lot of the criticism that he's getting, um, he should welcome it because just like LeBron James is getting criticism for not making the playoffs with the Lakers, to whom much is given, much is required, right? And when you're the leader of the team, you're the quarterback, you should welcome that criticism. Um, I had an issue when he called out A.B. in the media because um, I've never been in a situation where I would even think to call out another player. Uh, because who am I to call out somebody else? I'm not perfect, right? And if you throw in interceptions, which he was throwing interceptions, mm. then you are also part of the issue, right? Mm -hmm. And so right there, I, I want to ask you something, though, and, and James, you chime in as <coughs> well. You said Ben is an extension of the head yes. coach. I, I think that's been the problem. Mm -hmm. I don't think he and Tomlin have been on the same page. Mm -hmm. I think Ben has been basically working – as best he can yeah. to get the head coach out of there. That's been the disconnect. I, I don't no, think I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say he's been working to try and to try and get the head coach out of there by by no stretch of the imagination. Ben is doing exactly what he feels is the correct thing to do. What he thinks is going to help push a player. What he think, uh, you know, is is best for each individual situation. I don't. Um, I don't see him as an extension of Tomlin. Tomlin is the head coach. He is the guy that is supposed to lead the rest of these men. He's the one that has to set the rules and the standards mm -hmm. of what it is that he's going to allow mm -hmm. and what he's not going to allow and pass that down to them. Marcellus, I, I, I'm going to say this. I want to bring you in because I know you are probably the most passionate Tomlin defender. I, I, I think if he does lose his job at the end of the season, I think the Steelers have been more than fair. I think the NFL has been more than fair. I think this will be his 13th year, mm -hmm. yeah. I think, in Pittsburgh. And the other thing is, I think is, I don't think he'll be unemployed long. No. He will no. get <laughs> another no shot yeah. immediately. And you get a 13-year run mm -hmm. in a great organization and another shot almost instantaneously in the NFL, mm -hmm. he's been treated fairly. Uh, I think fair by NFL standards, but not fair by Pittsburgh Steelers standards. Think about it. They've only had three head coaches, including Mike yeah. Tomlin. So by that standard... Why are you getting rid of me? Uh, I've won more than those two coaches, not Super Bowls in Chuck Noll, but in win percentage. And I'll have my Super Bowls as well. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, but like you said, he's going to find a landing spot. Maybe that will be the best thing for him to kind of cleanse the resume, give him a reset. Uh -huh. uh, because right now, it's just incident after incident that just, yeah. it gets attached to him. And it really blinds us from how good a coach he is and how great a leader he seems to be. I've never been on his team, okay. but from my distance, and we've all been there before, we look at another coach, we're like, he could get it out of me. He can make me go yeah. run through that wall. He right. seems like that type of coach. I would agree 100% with what you just said because Tomlin has been one of my favorite coaches to watch year in and year out because every year you know Pittsburgh Steelers is going to be a problem. And every year 
they show up. And, and for Mike Tomlin, the one thing that I have seen, and you can speak more to this, this is from the outsider's perspective looking in, there are always some off the field issues. There are always just a couple things, as you alluded to, that you're like, they need more leadership there, right? They need or better leadership or better direction because it was maybe it was AB who was live streaming from the locker room, right? Or it was the year that you guys had to play uh, Jacksonville. And I don't remember who the player was, but he was already looking past Jacksonville and yeah. talking about the, the, talking about the, uh, mm. the Patriots in the AFC <laughs> Championship game. And I'm like, wait, I believe hold it was on a Mike. minute. <laughs> yeah, like, oh, you mean Mike was on the field? No, no, Mike the play? made some comments. <laughs> that was when I went to New England, actually. Yeah, yeah was that was Tom. the year you left. But if Mike made some comments about, you know, yeah. the New England game is actually yeah. the main thing, and I'm yeah. not going to avoid talking about it. Very un -Bel belichick like Let's return to the NFL, where Antonio Brown has spent the day bragging on Instagram, claiming to have the highest average salary for a wide receiver, oh, but that. according to Browns agent Drew Rosenhaus, the receiver might have accomplished something even more significant, saying Brown's situation could give players more leverage throughout the league and create more balance between players and teams. I'm going to try to be quick here because I can't wait to hear y'all. Marcellus, in your book, Never Shut Up, which you should go out and buy, That's you up. talked about Brad Blank, your agent, mm. Lee Steinberg, your agent, mm. and going back to Brad Blank. I believe Drew Rosenhaus gets certain players, particularly emotional ones, and, and maybe not the most attentive to detail, gets them in bad contracts because he knows he can talk them into having a tantrum and going to war with their team and fixing the contract later. I, I think Antonio Brown was put into a series of bad contracts in Pittsburgh and that he had to force his way out to fix a bad contract in Pittsburgh. <laughs> not in his client's best interest, it's in Drew Rosenhaus' best interest. Um, I will have to do a little more in-depth <laughs> research to the contracts to respond to that. Right. Uh, <laughs> but I will say this, uh, what he's highlighting is not all players are out for rings. Um, some players are just out for money. I told you from day one, I never thought about a Super Bowl championship. One, it was out of my control. There were games where I had tremendous games and tremendous sacks. We lose a game. Yep. There's games I didn't do a damn thing. We win the game. Uh, there are seasons when I was balling out of control. Oh, well, you're not going to make the playoffs. This season, I didn't do as much. Well, we in the playoffs. So I never made that my goal because it was an interdependent goal. I kept my blinders on. I was going to play as well as I could. That was going to get rewarded, and everything else was going to come from that. Antonio Brown's of that mindset. Sometimes it comes later in your career. Sometimes it comes earlier. That said, <laughs> A.B. didn't prove that players have power. Mm -hmm. He actually proved the opposite. He proved that you got to throw a tantrum, get out of character, change mm -hmm. identity, mm -hmm. burn up the entire burn home, right. and still be at the mercy of a team yeah. that says, we may trade you or we may keep you depending on what we get for you. Mm -hmm. If that's not the definition of powerless, and I'm not calling out <laughs> AB, I'm calling out every other player that thinks that this is going to work again, be careful because yep. once you're done, there's going to be carnage from all the stuff that you have to do just to get in that position. I think it worked. What he did worked for him. As far as power, I wouldn't call it power. I think what he did worked for him in that situation because of who he was. Mm -hmm. They got a third and a fifth round. Who would have said that all they would have had to give up was a third and a fifth round? Yuck. For arguably the Giants best is hot right now. Right, <laughs> right. But arguably for the best receiver in the league, especially yeah. after seeing what they got for OBJ over there. Like, Come on. So in, in that, you know, mindset, then, yeah, he was able to, like he said, uh, get where he wanted to go. And, and Financially. Yeah, financially, but I don't know if it's going to translate to, to the possibility of the rings he could have had in, in Pittsburgh. As, as long as we don't have guaranteed contracts, we don't have the leverage. No Just question. Be honest. Fully. You know, the the, the fully. organization is always going to have the leverage over us because they can just cut you, right? And right. that's why... Guys try to get as much money as possible in that guaranteed signing bonus right. because that is the only thing that is guaranteed to you. Because a lot of us has been through what we've been cut when we've been owed money. It's a terrible feeling. It's not a good feeling. So until we get guaranteed contracts, which is going to be a big deal when the new CBA is up, and that's where I think the players will have the power to because they're going to have to strike. They're going to have to hold out for a certain period of time in order for them to get the guaranteed contract. The, the to first get to couple that years where the money is guaranteed, like, yeah, it's a Mexican standoff. We both holding each other. After yeah. that, 
third year yeah. is gone, your yeah. gun is down, and yeah. they still got the pistol mm -hmm. on you. And you're mm -hmm. getting older. Right. <laughs> exactly. I just, and again, I know people need to <laughs> look more in depth, but how, A.B. should be asking Drew Rosenhaus, I'm the best receiver statistically of the the last three, four, five years. Mm -hmm. How was I ever in this position mm -hmm. where I had no guaranteed money with the Pittsburgh yeah, Steelers? Yeah, that's crazy. How did I get in this situation? I think for and AB, it got to that situation because it was like, what money am I going to get right now? When you're young, it's like, what am I going to get right now? Mm -hmm. What can you get me right now? And since he was under a contract that wasn't, you know, to the value of what he was giving them, it was like, okay, we'll push a little bit to you more, a little more to you right now. And he's like, okay. I get Take this it. right now, right. right. Yeah. You know, it's interesting. When they don't have to. So it's looking like, I don't have to do this, but I'm being nice and I'm doing this. I'm giving you yeah. this money in for up front instead of making you wait to get it. Yeah, money can't buy you everything. And one thing that AB has lost is the power to be an ambassador for one of the story franchises, yeah. the Pittsburgh Steelers. Yeah. Um, it, it, you can say that he's going to divide that between Pittsburgh and Oakland, but it won't be the same. Strahan, everyone sees Strahan now and says, oh, amazing. I remember like in 2000, Strahan was signing short deals. He mm -hmm. was at the top of his game. Four years, 32 million. People were like, you can get more. You can get longer years. Strahan knew that 32 million was coming to me. I was going to get all four of those right. years. What he also did is he stayed with one franchise. Yeah. Top of the game player stayed at one franchise, went out with a Super Bowl ring, and blah. And all I'm saying is the AB, it may be a little short-sighted to take all the money right now mm -hmm. and not be that guy anymore in terms of Pittsburgh Steelers and war. I, I go back. That conversation you just had, is a conversation Drew Rosenhaus or whoever the hell his agent should be trying to explain to him the long-term a vision for his mm -hmm. career yeah. and a vision for his salary. And a lot of times, I'm just sorry, when you have that powerhouse agent that represents 100 players, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. he's trying to serve 100 rather than just a handful. Yeah. And a lot of times, players get screwed over in that endeavor. You look at Le'Veon Bell's situation, right? Mm -hmm. He held out for that whole year. and. Le'Veon Bell did more than just play running back, right? He accounted for almost 50% of that offense, right? But when it, when it came time to negotiate, what they want, what the team did, they wanted to box him in into a running back category. Yeah. He was a workhorse for that team. He caught the ball out of the backfield. He was one, the second most suspended, targeted Suspended player. twice. He undermined his leverage. he was the workhorse. Yeah. Yeah. Was he not the workhorse? But you know, when he was available, when he, deserve, when he, was available, when yeah. he wasn't suspended, They're going to beat you up was. in negotiations exactly. on that. And you know exactly. how the game is. Like, again, they have to. Le'Veon's another guy that he needs to question his agent. Again, we put all the blame on the team. We, we all the NFL, they're, sometimes something. Agent these, can only do what the player allowed him to do. Yeah. And they work for you. They're At your the end employee. of the day, if my agent brings me something, I'm like, that's not going to work. I'm telling him that's not going to work. Tell them that's not going to work. We're not going to go with that. If he says that's all we can do, then all right, that's all you can do. Maybe I need to go with somebody else. Mm. Yeah. You do mm. understand that not every NFL player has your mindset, your strength or convictions, and that some guys get taken advantage of. Yeah. But of ignorance that. is that's no true. excuse. You got to right. have some what, standard, yeah. some, some code point. of ethics. You have to know this person works for me, mm -hmm. works under mm -hmm. me. I know the relationship and perception seems like we work on the same level or they are actually This is how us. it goes. It's not how it goes. When you want to say something that's going to be taken or took the wrong way to the team or you want to say something that you know is going to be wrong, you put it through your agent and let your agent say it. That way he looks like the bad guy. Yeah. When you don't want to sign something, your agent don't want you to sign yeah. it. Yeah. You know, everything is through him, but you're directing him on what to say and what to do. Guys are terrible at taking care of their health. Whether it's a knee injury, bad back, or something worse, we're usually more comfortable rubbing some dirt on it than seeing a doctor. I'm guilty of it myself. Particularly when I was younger and playing football, I can remember hurting my shoulder and never telling the trainers that turned into a real problem. The same is true for erectile dysfunction. Studies show 70% of guys who experience ED don't get treated for it. Thankfully, Roman created an easy way to get checked out by a doctor and get treated for ED online. Roman is a one-stop shop where licensed U.S. physicians can diagnose ED and ship medication right to your door. With Roman, there are no waiting rooms, awkward face-to-face -face conversations, or uncomfortable trips to the pharmacy. You can handle everything discreetly online. All you have to do is visit GetRoman.com speak 
complete a dynamic online visit, chat with a doctor, and get genuine medication delivered to your door in discreet, unmarked packaging. Guys, go online and get checked by the doctor. Erectile dysfunction is a problem that guys don't tackle, but with Roman, it's really easy, so take care of it. For a free online visit, go to GetRoman.com slash speak. That's GetRoman.com slash speak for a free online visit. GetRoman.com slash speak. Time for my favorite segment. Time to get antisocial. Darnell, what you got? Mm. Sir, we're going to start with Antonio Brown. Yesterday, he posted this real cryptic tweet of some Drake lyrics from an old song saying, quote, trade you off the team while you're in your sleep. Y'all show me nothing guaranteed. Sounds like he's implying that he had no hand in being traded. This obviously didn't make any sense, and still his fans went in on A.B. on social media, reminding him that he was the one who requested a trade in the first place. You guys like A.B. trying to play the victim card here? No. And, you know, again, he demanded a trade, and he got what he wanted. But, look, man, A.B. is so random. He, he you know, <laughs> is so... He's so day to day. Random. He thinks one thing today, he'll think something else tomorrow. I just love the fact that he used our plight, which is like when you're just sitting there, like I got cut one time. I was just watching ESPN. I was like, that's my name. Wait a minute. You know, <laughs> like that's not what AV is supposed to be talking about. You got what you wanted, just you were asleep at the time that it happened. I don't know. Do I'm going to try and read more into it. Let's I'm going gonna to say that he's referring to what he ended up calling fake news maybe and the issue or the situation where he they had a deal together for him to go to buffalo, buffalo. Yeah. he may be saying they didn't talk to him or oh, try they try to force that one force it they tried to maybe force right. that situation okay. on him and yeah, once like it got to where they were actually in communication yeah. with his agent it came to oh, oh no oh i like that happen. Kyle Coven rewind the tape let maybe. me talk again <laughs> you're right cuz he was like bro they try to force one on me and i was asleep and they were hoping that it would just all go through and then when right. i wake up i'm i have to be there oh. Makes like, sense. I'm th I'm th that's just what I'm reading. I don't good know. Take. I didn't talk. Uh, good take, good take. Uh, All right, A's Darnell. No AB, doesn't it? <laughs> What's, <laughs> What's next? <laughs> Am I tripping? What? Do y'all smell some smoke in here? What? Smoke it! <laughs> time for the smoke it's detector. Smoke it! <laughs> Big Ben has been taking a lot of heat on his leadership skills, especially from former teammates AB and Le'Veon Bell. Well, Juju Smith-Schuster, Sh excuse me, took to Twitter to defend his quarterback, saying, I was so blessed to enter the league and play with a Hall of Fame QB as a 20-year-old. Ben has taught me so much. He's a true leader, and I can't wait to rock with my guy this season. Well, hey. this prompted a response from AB on Twitter saying, quote, do not listen to any NFL player who haven't got paid yet. They will do and say anything to make sure they're going to get paid, even if it's compromising integrity or anything. Sad but true. Marcellus, what? <laughs> what level of smoke is this? All right, let's start off with you, Juju. We are the world, all that. <laughs> I love my quarterback and all that stuff. I give you a wet match. We know what you're trying to say, but you didn't say it. But damn! <laughs> <laughs> the broke have spoke, company man. AB smacked you back exactly where he should. Scorch earth. It's amazing mm. when you got to go out there and say all the right things. We all understand what it's for to get to that contract. You love everything here. Just a few months ago, you loved AB too. So say what you mean and mean what you say AB did. He got him scorched earth right there. How did AB did the same thing? He'll say anything to get his money. Just because he says, he, been paid. he says negative, <laughs> he says negative, he says negative things to get his money. No, this dude saying Stop, positive Willock. things. First, what? Willock, if I leave somewhere or you leave somewhere, and all of a sudden I say I love this here. When I loved you too, I would either include you or I wouldn't put it out there because mm. it makes it seem like I, I'm really mad at you. So Juju, you love playing with AB. Now you don't. You just love Roethlisberger. And that's he's caping it. up for his quarterback. Who's he's caping up for that coin. That's what he's caping up for. <laughs> that quarterback coin. and coin. All right, mad, what's up, James? <laughs> Man, I was hoping y'all wasn't gonna come to me <laughs> on this right here. Say it. Look, <laughs> for Antonio to say this. His truth is what, his, what he believes it to be, that Ben is not a good leader. For Juju, his truth is my quarterback is a good leader. 
that's just how they feel at, about it at that situation. There's another lane, though, when you used to learn so much from A.B. and you guys taking these pictures together. I knew Juju had a certain way about him. When he finally knew he was the man and he showed that picture of him toe-tapping out the end zone, mm -hmm. and who was in the background looking? <laughs> A.B., of the million pictures that they showed. I ain't gonna lie, there's a little fire going on right there then. I, you know, it's... I'm just saying now, I'm starting I mean, to I'm see just, something. I, you know, I, got, I got both of them on my IG, and I'm like... <laughs> Oh, they the homies. Come on, y'all silently, like, talking to each other right here. Or they got to be. They got to be. They on the same page. That's All right, funny. Darnell. That's funny. What's next? Yeah, moving on to everyone's favorite family, the Big Ballers. <laughs> a report service that Lonzo Ball cut ties with one of the co-founders of the Big Baller brand. Uh-oh. What? I keep thought we was going to... Yeah, we are. Yeah, we are. Yeah, OK. Oh. The Big Baller brand, the one that have million in cash went missing from the company's accounts. In response to the news, Lonzo's manager, Darren Moore, wants everyone to take their $500 big baller brand shoes and throw them in the trash. Moore posted a video of the shoe trash on social media, along with the hashtag, dump your merch. Marcellus, we all know you got pretty much every triple I got B merch. every single thing. What, what you gonna do here? You throwing them away? You gonna I, keep them? I'ma tell whoever the manager is. One, them, them shoes was seven fifty because if you wear over thirteen, they charge you extra money. So I had to pay seven fifty, <laughs> and I ain't dumping jack. I'm keeping all my triple B. They comfortable. They cool. And one day y'all gonna be mad. To do what in? You play well, basketball? Or? No, I can't play basketball. Don't let the don't Did let. Did you do thing. anything? Can you do anything athletic in other than walk around? Um, I haven't tried, but I know I look good when I'm trying to Do just walk around. hurt after walking I around? I like the shoes. I'm not going to lie. I've never gotten any free swag. I've purchased it all. I love if the shoes. If his manager so you basically bust your money. Because he's mad. I'm not going to get mad at you. Well, you want to shut something. everything down. Good for them. Guess what? In 20 years, when y'all can't get no triple B, and I'm still with <laughs> that it's, it's going to be worth less than the material it's, it's on. It like, may be, but you know what's going to you know be less that? than that? Throwing it in the trash? You know, that's like bragging about eating Spam. I got yeah, some Spam. I got Spam. <laughs> yeah. Great, have a good Spam sandwich, baby. Hell no. Look, look, look. If you mad at James, do I got to be mad at James? You left Triple B. That's on you, bro. If Triple B goes up in flames. I got to burn the clothes? I got to throw away the clothes? You ain't got to burn it, but what, what? you using it? You only got it to support oh. them. It's gone. He no, still got I got it because they fresh. You still got Jordan-ass jeans. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Got, <laughs> Hey, everything in this world is guns. circular. Yes. Them hard plastic top guns. Look at, oh, That's look. all I had. I ain't going to lie. It was dope, yeah. bro. I was just sliding on the court in the so basketball. So much comes back in style, <laughs> comes back in fashion. You ain't That's the only thing with break rocks. All right, Darnell, what's the question of the day? Question, question, question of the day. All right, guys, so this past weekend, I thought uh, Scott Van Pelt made some good points uh, in regards to Izzo yelling at his players. Mm. I want to ask you guys, do you agree that we have an issue in society with holding people accountable for their actions? Uh, without question. Uh, I mean, my God, before the show starts today, what, Jussie Smollett? <laughs> he mm. just What's walked on? on his deal. Mm. Yeah, I think we have a problem in this society with holding people accountable, and I think that... You know, anytime, anytime you criticize anybody, and particularly if they're a celebrity or popular or whatever, but, oh my God, well, how can you criticize? They're the greatest. They're worth millions of dollars and they're popular and you're not. Yeah, well, we have a problem with holding people accountable. <laughs> yeah, this is one of the things I think social media truly influences people because now all of your business is out there, so it's just ammunition for someone else who's waiting for you to slip up. It's a gotcha moment always waiting to happen. Uh, it's like a fear-based mentality. One of the reasons people don't like to talk trash and just boast is because they know one day the shoe's gonna be on the other foot. No the question. rabbit's gonna have the gun. The and I don't want gun. you to smoke me. Right. So guess what? When you are in trouble, I'm not gonna smoke you. And we just go around chasing our tails. That's where we are. I think it's just people being maybe a little, little bit too soft. I mean, mm. uh, society itself, us, everybody. Um, you need to you need to have a little bit of, uh, you know, being told that maybe you're not as, as great as you think you are, and and you need to be uh, you know pushed you know a certain way, and if that happens to be with the coach all up in your face, then that's what it is. Marcel, so I like your point though about how we're afraid to be critical because we know at some point we're going to be under the gun, mm -hmm. and it's one of it's one of the things I've done intentionally throughout my entire media career and being single makes it a lot easier. Yeah. I live very transparently. Yeah. There's no dirt on me 
that I won't, I'm not willing to discuss or haven't already put out there. Yeah. You ain't gonna catch me nowhere where you'll be, I'm surprised to see Whitlock here. How dare you? I told you I'm here. I told you I'm here. But you know what? Here's another level. I agree with that and I love you for that, but there's another level out there. When you have a family, when you have kids, Dr. Dre, six years ago, gives $70 million to USC. Then he, his daughter gets in and he takes a jab. Oh, you know what that jab got countered with? A uh, avalanche to the point where he had to even respond. He pulled it off. He pulled it off. So it's crazy to protect your son, your daughter, your family, your wife. It could be your mama. Kevin Durant and his mama had these issues. Like, no matter who you are, if you're in a public light, they coming against you or somebody with you. Whitlock and Wiley joined now by longtime NBA player Katino Mobley. Let's move to the Lakers, who are already looking toward next year with rumors flying about who will be the team's coach for LeBron's second season in L.A. Despite the fact that Luke Walton has yet to be fired, the latest name being floated for the job is Jason Kidd, who <coughs> didn't exactly throw cold water on the idea, saying, when you have the opportunity to be a part of the Lakers, you can't turn it down. He also went on to talk about, you know, how much he'd love to coach LeBron James. I find this kind of disrespectful. This is unprecedented in terms of you have a sitting coach and people are openly talking about replacing him. That's not really common in the coaching ranks and circles. And, and if you just go look at Jason Kidd's history, how he went straight from a player to coaching the Nets when Brian Shaw thought he had the Nets job mm. to why he's with the Nets to jumping over to Milwaukee and replacing Larry Drew. This is kind of his M.O., man. I mean, he. I hope he doesn't start talking about, you know, hey, man, I think I'd be good against, uh, with Marcellus on Speak for Yourself. <laughs> <laughs> you smoked out of here, then. You already know. You know what? It's interesting. I, I can't argue that, but I don't think this was disrespectful because it was almost unprecedented. Like, Vegas has him as the odds favorite to be the Lakers' next head coach, and then he just mysteriously appears on television that day, and they were poking and prodding him. So unless you want the Russell Wilson robot answers, and we all know that's what PC can you be. You gotta do the interview. Just pull the Stay string, at home. say anything, pull the string, say anything. Being a human being in that moment, I think he did the most respectful interview he could in terms of saying what a human being would say. It's the Lakers. We know how big it is. It's LeBron. We know how big he is. Yeah, I would love the opportunity, but Luke is doing and incredible job. So For the next two weeks. <laughs> well, that's on the Lakers, yeah. not on Jason Kidd. I thought he did a respectful job. I, I mean, I'm with, I'm with both. Uh, listen, hmm? I think it's disrespectful because now you, the, the energy that Luke holds throughout this process, just like the kids when they were, think, almost getting traded. Yeah. Their energy's messed up. Luke's energy, you, your, your smile is not a 100% smile anymore. Yeah. Right? <laughs> your enthusiasm, the way you draw up plays, that's not the same anymore. And to, and to speak about Jason Kidd before you speak about Ty Lue or Mark Jackson, to me, that's a little disrespectful to them as well. You got Avery Johnson. Of course, he's in Alabama. He did a oh, really good fired. job. Mm -hmm. Right, but I'm saying, he, yeah. well, some people get fired. Yeah. Dwayne Casey got fired, and he was coach oh, of the year. Yep. Right, but what I'm saying is you have guys that are, you know, really good candidates. Not saying that Jason Kidd is not, but he's not the first one you talk about. And, and yes, it is disrespectful <laughs> because now – it's on Luke to think about this every single day. When he's living in Manhattan Beach and people are talking to him all day, every day, how do you smile? How do you even work in that? This again, and I'm not trying to crack anybody's funny bone, but when I say there's a privilege to being an athlete and to having walked off a <coughs> college campus, 18, 19, 20 years old, instant millionaire, Jason Kidd's probably made more than $100 million as an NBA player. Oh, yeah. He's not a part of the coaching fraternity. He didn't start off in the video room making $20,000 a year. He's not Eric Spolstra. He's not Greg Popovich. He's not any of – he's not a part of the fraternity of coaches, and so he doesn't act like a coach. If you were part of that fraternity, you don't do these type of things. But if you're sitting on more than $100 million as a player and Rich Paul and you're doing the bidding of Rich Paul and not actually serving the, the interest of other coaches – or have any really respect for Jeannie Buss and the Lakers. Th that to me, and the fact that he thinks he can do this without offending the Lakers and Jeannie Buss, who hired Luke Walt. Th that's her employee that he's uh, treating like a cadaver. He thinks you he think can get away think, with it. You think he's offending the Lakers and Jeannie Buss when he's... That's her employee. I, I hope 
that if Eric Shanks or Charlie Dixon is somebody I think it's more talking about, about my job. But I think it's more about Luke. No respect for Luke. Yeah, no respect for Luke. I, I seriously doubt it's Genie Buss and the Lakers. Yeah, because you're going to need them to Luke. employ him, if, if anything. I'm saying if I were Genie Buss, uh -huh. that was my employee that I've made promises to, uh -huh. and, and there's someone out there talking about replacing him while he still has it, I would be offended. But clearly, he thinks there's no risk there because Magic or Rich Paul or LeBron have made a decision, and it doesn't matter who Genie Buss hire. It doesn't matter what the owner thinks. I can talk about this man like he's a cadaver. Well, you know what? One thing to, to lean into what you're saying, it's a smart play, if, if in full agreement with you, it's a smart play if you're Jason Kidd to put your name out there in the hat right now. You know why? Two things will happen. By the time that the decision needs to be made, people will have fatigue in terms of their response. People are not going to be as adamant and mad at you, Jason Kidd, and disrespecting the Lakers by July. And then also, it's smart because you want to see what this fan base is going to get accustomed to in terms of, can Jason Kidd be the coach? Let's see. Put your finger out there. Let's read it and see what right, he leaves. Well, there. whoever the Lakers end up with as their head coach, they'll have their work cut out for them. Just about everyone seems to agree LeBron's first season in L.A. has been a disaster. Everyone except Dwayne Wade. Mm. The Heat star actually thinks his buddy LeBron has had an MVP caliber year that only got derailed by LeBron's injury. I think this is unhealthy for LeBron. Mm. I, I think... He doesn't need his buddies and respected guys in the NBA. Hey, man, I know you've only won 31, 32 games. You're not going to make the playoffs. But you were an MVP. You had an MVP-type season. It's not you, LeBron. This is the bubble of greatness. When you are that great, no one tells you the truth, and any shortcomings are rationalized. Well, I wouldn't go that far. I will say this. It's not a great look. Because when you try to pick your boy up, you always remember people are going to read it as your boy is down. And that's not fair because LeBron, by his numbers this year, even though there may be some empty calories, is not necessarily down. This fits conveniently at the top of LeBron in terms of his resume, some top five career numbers for him. If you want to talk about points per game and you talk about his rebounds, his career high, assists per game. Like, LeBron is doing his part. But as we all know, we perceive it differently if you make the playoffs or go to the championship like he did last year or you're a team on the outside looking in. Those same numbers, uh, we've all been a part of it. You give them the same amount of sacks, give them the same amount of points. Did y'all win or lose? All sacks ain't the same, Marcel. I, I get it, but you know what? At the same time, that's your effort being rewarded by you actually making a play. And, 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 LeBron's you, making plays. You so. guys make good points. Now, uh, MVP stats... Stats is not the same thing, right? When when you deal with MVP as an MVP season, that's not the same thing. Right. I can have MVP stats: 27, 50 from the field goal, 33.8 uh, from three. Mm. Run it all down: eight, re nine rebounds, eight assists. Yeah, but still, that's not an MVP season. That's MVP stats. That's totally different. And I understand Dwayne Wade. But LeBron James is in the, the Western Conference now. It's totally different. It's totally different Western Conference. D there are no breaks. You c there is no breaks. Is, MV is, is Dwayne Wade, because he's just one of his best friends, is that's, you know, is he sticking up for him? No. I, he yeah. is having an MVP season stat-wise, not playing-wise. How about playing-wise? Christmas Day, they beat Golden State by 20 up there. Before. Everybody's beating Golden State this year. Well, well, at that moment, I'm saying he said the main reason is because of the injury. And LeBron, in that moment, I agree. Well, did, was he having an MVP season on but top of this? But then LeBron at that James, moment? LeBron James in 16, 15 years, 14, 14 years, LeBron James, to me, has been – Always top five MVP talks, if not the number one MVP guy. That's just his stats will always be like this. Right. That's just like going to sleep in bed, he can get this. Yeah. The point is when you start getting older, your stats, you have to do more like uh, 05 or 04 against Detroit when you had 23 in the fourth quarter. You can't will yourself because now you're older. So you need more counterparts to will because. When, you, when you're younger, you can uplift your team more with your energy. When you're older, you, you, yeah, you can have those stats, but when you're older, you need other people involved right. so those stats can really mean something. And look, look, man, it's not reflected in the stats, but the biggest problem for LeBron James this year has been defensive effort. Mm -hmm. right? 
that counts as terms of MVP season. Yeah. You know, if, if you play no defense or you're unreliable on defense, you're not having an MVP caliber season. Dwayne Wade needs to tell his boy the truth. You got to step up the game or get your weight up. Time to play hot clock. Hot clock. We'll each get just 24 seconds to give our hot take on some of the biggest stories in the day of the day. Let's start with the Thunder who lost to the Grizzlies last night with both Paul George and Russell Westbrook struggling with the loss. OKC falls to the A seed in the West. Marcellus, there's still a virtual lock mm -hmm. to make the playoffs, <laughs> but are you worried about OKC in the postseason? Uh, not worried because it's based off of expectations. That's where your worry comes from. I never expected OKC to win it all. Golden State still exists. I never expected OKC to really be the challenger to well, go in state. <clears throat> so I'm not worried. Uh, I think this team is going to find their same comfortable fate second round. Maybe if they overachieve, they could go a little further, but they're not beating Golden State. They need too much from Paul George. And right now, coming off the shoulder injury, he's not the same exact but guy. Tino, you worried about OKC moving forward? I am worried. I'm worried because uh, it seems like, first of all, they're playing 500 basketball. Mm. Right, it's they're not really playing consistent, really good basketball like they were playing. Now you have, uh, and I was <clears throat> there was there was there's OKC and Houston are the teams that can beat Golden State. Don't seem like OKC can do that at the moment right now. And I don't like how Russell's being his old self. Right, he's trying to take over the game, give it back to Paul George. I'm really worried. Uh, they got if the eighth seed, they're gonna have to play Golden State likely. <laughs> or even Denver, if they're the seventh seed. I think Denver's still the number two. I don't think they can get out of the first round if they're not the sixth or fifth seed. Mm. And so, yeah, I'm very worried about OKC. And Russell Westbrook is, you know, a dog that can't change his bark. He's going to be <laughs> Russell Westbrook. That's not good. All right, let's move to Toronto, where the Raptors are reportedly – growing more <coughs> confident that they will be able to hold on to Kawhi Leonard when he becomes a free agent this offseason. Marcellus, hmm? you got 24 seconds. I heard you. You buying this, that Toronto can hold on to Kawhi Leonard? I am. One, them quiet ones. You, you got to watch them quiet ones. Man. They keep their cards so close to the vest. It's like inside of them. Tim Duncan or, or Kawhi Leonard, I don't trust anything that comes out. <laughs> I'm scared as a Clipper fan. But two... Outside of Los Angeles, my favorite city in the world is Toronto. I know how it could seduce you, baby. And it's working on Kawhi maybe a little bit. It's not a championship experience, but I still love it. All right, Katino, are you buying Kawhi could stay in Toronto? Well, I'm not buying it. Uh, I think um, him being from California, buying a house in San Diego, even though it's not that close to the Clippers facility, I still think that he's going to come back and play for the Clippers. I think that. Um, I think he's a frugal kind of person, you know, kind of, he's tight with his money, right? So to buy something in uh, San Diego and to live in Toronto is too much. Toronto taxes are terrible. Ooh, Come on terrible. back to Clippers. Terrible. All right, I'm going to say this. They've done everything in their power to get this guy. Mm -hmm. They have allowed him to miss 20 games so far this season. Mm -hmm. they, they have bent over backwards mm -hmm. trying to make this guy happy. I think they've gone too far. Mm -hmm. I don't think they've challenged him enough or pushed him enough. I'm not buying this. This is wishful thinking being pushed by the Toronto front office. We've been over backwards, and of course he's going to say Relationships are tricky. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> to the Celtics, who are looking ahead to the playoffs and have <coughs> given Kyrie Irving the night off tonight against the Cavs, citing this season's breakout cliche, load management. All right, Marcellus, do you have an issue with the struggling Celtics allowing Kyrie to sit out? No, no issue at all. Um, you got to keep him for what matters most, which is the playoffs. This is a guy who has championship pedigree. Uh, you talk about how that's going to add to this team. And last year, he wasn't there, even though they went to the Eastern Conference Finals game seven. You're trying to get over even that hump. So you need Kyrie when it matters most. So Kyrie, load management makes sense in our sport of football. Low management is not even called that. Just say, hey, rest for the playoffs. And we're fine with it in the NFL, but now we mad at it in the basketball? Rest, bro. All right, Coutinho, any problems with Kyrie sitting out here? I, I would say I would agree with uh, Marcellus if he played all season. But not playing all season, low management for what? And one is the team don't play well with you, truthfully. Mm. They play well without you. So right now in this little short period of time, you need to gain some type of chemistry 
to be able to win because they, they won without you last year. They're 10 and 2 without you this year. So I want you to play. Listen, I, I don't have an issue with it. I just want to rename it because this is unload management is what's going on mm. here. They know Kyrie Irving's out of there. Mm. That stuff he said at the beginning of the year, I'm sticking around with some long-term contract. They've read the tea leaves, and Kyrie's not going to be here for long. And so they're unloading Kyrie, and this is unload management. <laughs> Better team without him. He's been a headache. Celtics moving on. All right, finally, let's move to Milwaukee, where the Bucks host the Rockets tonight. <clears throat> we'll see a showdown of the two MVP frontrunners, James Harden and the Greek Freak. All right, Marcellus, do you think the MVP will be decided tonight? I hope not. That's so damn lazy. Yeah. These esteemed voters, oh, they play each other at the end of our voting cycle? Let's just see who has the better game and then that's the MVP. Why not? No, because that, it's a body of work yes. of 70 some games already, and you're going to say, but they see each other in the same game, and they don't even guard each other. They don't even play the yeah. same position. Like, stop, man. That's so damn simple. What if you're on the fence? On the fence? How are you on the what? fence? 36 and a half on? points. Harden winning MVP it needs to be settled. What fence are you on? Yeah. Yeah, what's that? You have a problem with this. Do I have a – yes, I have a problem. You don't dictate it on one game. <laughs> okay. You can't just take it on one it's game. It's not a close race. Why not look at this last game? Yes. Yeah, Listen, this game, yes, it is a close race, but this game doesn't dictate who is the MVP. That's not how that works. Yeah. It's a body. It's the whole season. And I'm going to give you some stats really quick. Will Chamberlain, Jordan, Elgin Baylor, the only ones that averaged more than... 36. Th uh, more than... Uh, uh, Harden. Uh, Harden. Harden. That's the only ones out there. Lower. And they're the second best record in the NBA. Wave it off. It's on overtime. Wave it off. Wave it Shot off. Clock. Uh, listen, I don't have a problem with it. I think it's a close, even race. If there's some voters out there that have waited until right now and they're going to take a final look tonight. Oh, this is the last game of the year. Their, it's not the last game. The last time they'll face it. <laughs> last and it can sway their vote either way. I got no problem with that. You're such a fan look, I'm, I'm going to wow. I'm gonna give you 10 more seconds, or these last eight seconds, because... Because again, I've in December, in December, in December against the Lakers, he had 50 points. Since then, he averaged 40, and he was second best in the NBA. Yeah, he had more. That's more, James Harden. More James memorable in the more West. MVP. Hard. James Harden in the West. More memorable moment. I'm gonna decide tonight. <laughs> Uncle Jimmy's here. What are your thoughts so far? Looks like you put on some weight there, uh, Uncle Jimmy. What, what did try, man? What try, man? Yeah, well, you know, hey, don't worry about what trimester I'm in. <laughs> hey, let's go on and get to the big dummy of the day here. <laughs> big dummy of the day go to somebody I heard a few minutes ago say, money can't buy you happiness. <laughs> I said everything. <laughs> Damn it. The hat fits too. Look right? here. I don't know where you shopping at, <laughs> but I can go somewhere and buy something that closely resembles happiness, okay? <laughs> hey, I'm going to tell you, you just, I just ain't got enough money to do it. Come on, man. Uh, boy, I'm going to leave that one alone. There you go. Yeah, yeah. All right. Here's a highlight from our discussion <laughs> earlier about Sean Payton. Payton's officiating crusade is pure deflection. Payton wants football fans to remember the time the refs missed a call mm. rather than focus on who's bad during the rest of the game. <laughs> I can't rock with Sean Payton. He's trying to do it for his team, his own selfish ways, and for a greater good for all teams because this can haunt a franchise. Who's All bad? right, Uncle Jimmy. Who's bad? <laughs> don't even, don't go hit anywhere that near one, Michael though. Jackson. Don't go bad? anywhere near Michael Jackson. <laughs> What's your take on Sean Payton? Come on. Hey, man, <laughs> I love it. I love it when you climb your buffalo butt up on a high horse. <laughs> <laughs> and then you want to sit up here and advise people to take the high road. <laughs> mm, man, please. Mm. Man, Sean Payton got every right in the world to be irritated and irate. Preach! Keep going, big dog. <laughs> Thank you, Merkulis. <laughs> Welcome. Hey, man, let me tell you something. They ain't built a, a high horse strong enough <laughs> to hold my nephew. <laughs> hey, man, when Jason left Kansas City, the dude held a three-hour press conference. <laughs> it was broadcast on TV and radio. What? <laughs> Big time. Huh, and the dude was never on no high horse. <laughs> he tore into everybody. For real. <laughs> everybody. <laughs> hey, man, nobody was sacred. <laughs> man, he went on, went on, call, he called this whole thing the explanation. <laughs> <laughs> Three <laughs> hours of riveting TV. <laughs> <laughs> better, better than any episode of The Sopranos or The Wire. <laughs> what? 
Hey, man, look, man, nobody, nobody throws a more entertaining, entertaining tantrum than Jason Whitlock. Mm. <laughs> I haven't seen that yet. <laughs> and it's totally ridiculous for him to sit up here and chastise Sean Payton. Oh, hypocrite. Hey, man, let's be real. The refs stole a Super Bowl from the Saints. Mm -hmm. Man, I remember when Jason got mad at a sports editor for just, just for stealing a donut in the press box. <laughs> stop it. Stop, stop lying. You stole the whole. Stop lying. <laughs> ah, I might be exaggerating, <laughs> but I'm not lying. <laughs> <laughs> Jason, none of your complaints can compare to what the city of New Orleans went through. Ooh. Uh-oh, here we go. Hey, man, Peyton and Drew Brees, man, their entire legacy was messed up for the rest not throwing that flag. Mm. And I don't blame Sean Payton for not letting it go. Mm. Who wouldn't? Mm. Hey, man, if it happened to the Chiefs, you'd be on this show whining every day. <laughs> say, uh, say what? Mm, like you did uh, about Belichick, uh huh, Malcolm Butler. Remember them times? Exactly, Merkless. <laughs> you know, remember, 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 Jay, Belichick's gonna have to explain this Malcolm Butler decision. Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> re re remember, he said Belichick gonna live to regret that decision. Remember? For a whole year. <laughs> but now the Super Bowl don't need to address their mistakes. Stop it. Mm. How did things work out for Belichick, Uncle Jimmy? Did he suffer by ignoring it? I've learned a lesson from Belichick. You know, you mm. ignore the whiners and complainers. You know, it's like you and your contract demand. <laughs> I'm ignoring that. T-shirt? <laughs> oh, 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 I see where this going. So you, you think you can ignore Uncle Jimmy? <laughs> Bet you can't ignore me when it comes to my paper. <laughs> Try me. We are. Hey, man, Uncle Jimmy ain't playing with nobody. <laughs> You and Merkless gonna both mess around here and catch a body. <laughs> Die right? With this 12 gauge shot, and keep on playing with me. Are oh, you Dave's loaf now, huh? Hey, yeah, yeah. Right. Get him. You gonna catch bodies, huh? All right. It's Not hard bad. Out here Not for. bad. Mm. <laughs> Not bad. All right, let me get to my approval ready Let's for see. Sean Payton. Uh, I'm dropping him in job performance. All that red. He's off his job. Uh, down to a 15, 17 all-time greatness. I'm dropping his character. He's a whiner and a complainer. Authenticity, he is authentic, so I raise him up a point. Goes from a 69 to a 65. Sean Payton, a role player right now. Damn, did they play yesterday? How did he lose a job before? He's, his job is coaching the Saints, not fixing officiating. <laughs> man. man, he lost the NFC Championship game, boy. You hard on him, man. I actually give him a point up for character for being a guy who knows that people like Jason Whitlock is going to ridicule him, and he still goes out there and does his job as a coach and a part of the competition committee. All that said, I got respect for the GOAT. He's a great coach, and that's why he's a winning team, winning franchise. All the uh, Uncle Jimmy, were you supposed to be impersonating me? Is that what this is all about? Uh, oh, no, I'm just impersonating. Oh, oh, this is what you look like that. when you got Rachel a contract. Manetta.